Hello everyone, I'm Vicky Tal, and here are my thoughts and comments on breakfast. Breakfast is a demolition derby racing game featuring a lot of exciting stuff, such as an impressive car damage system, realistic driving physics, and chaotic multiplayer with up to 24 players. I was introduced to the game when it was due to release on Steam by watching a release trailer on the store front page, and I got hooked right away when I read the product description. It turned out that the developers of this game are the same developers that made the original Flat Out games, games which I played a lot in my earlier days. So I went ahead and bought it, even though it was pretty steeply priced at 45 euros. After a little research, I found out that Breakfast is actually the end product of the early access game titled Next Car Game, which I first found out about some years ago. I never bought it back then, since I do not like the incremental experience of early access games, where content and features are added over time. But I remember they had a really cool tech demo to showcase their car demolition, where you drew around and smashed your car into different machines. Anyway, let's talk about the game we have ahead of us. Breakfast features a single player mode as well as a multiplayer mode. I will not go into depth about the single player mode because it isn't really too exciting. It's a very standard linear progression campaign without any story to speak of. You complete races and progress to new chapters as time goes on. Very simple. About the races. There are two different kind of races in Wreckfest. Demolition Derby and Normal Racing, which they call the Banger Race. I've never fancied Demolition Derby in its design, not even in the older flat out games, and I won't say much about it in this video. The idea of this game mode is to wreck all the other opponents while trying to stay alive. The player that has wrecked the most opponents when the game is over wins. As I said, I'm not a fan of this game mode but if you really like the mayhem of a demolition derby, you might enjoy it. In my opinion, Wreckfest really shines in the normal racing mode. In my previous sentence about demolition derby, I mentioned mayhem. Let's just say you're not completely free from mayhem in this mode either. With up to 24 players, races get really messy, parts get scattered and car wrecks start to rack up even from the first turn of the track. It's a really cool experience. Speaking of the different tracks in this game, I like them. They are varied and there are plenty of them. The developers have been really smart in their design by creating sub-tracks out of big maps, so they can essentially reuse their world design over multiple tracks. The sub-tracks from a common race map differs from each other by having strategically placed concrete blocks in turns, and other small modifications as well. Sometimes, however, this may cause some confusion when going down a road that is shared between two sub-tracks and you mix up the tracks in your head, but it's only a minor issue and quite subjective as well. Perhaps others don't find this as a problem. The physics in this game feels really good. It's a little bit getting used to if you're familiar with pure arcade racing games, since you do have to put in some effort to make a really good turn. I still brand this game as an arcade game though, but it also has this realistic feel to it. I may have a foggy memory of the earlier Flat Out games, but to me it feels like they went with more realism in this game compared to Flat Out. Breakfast also lacks the Nitro Boost found in the earlier Flat Out games. Physics on the road is great, but what's really great is the car demolition system. The developers got it right by focusing on this early in the development process, since it does a lot for the overall experience in this game. The graphics are not incredible for a game released in 2018, and on screenshots it looks quite dated but the incredible destruction of the cars that sends parts flying together with the map debris being scattered in every turn creates an amazing atmosphere. The absolute joy of this game is simply the frantic and deadly racing experience, the constant battle all the way between the green light and the finish line. You have to be on your toes all the time to avoid trailing predators while simultaneously planning the move on how to take over the driver in front of you. This game may seem like a straight up murder game, but you actually have to be quite clever to make the crashes work in your favor. Sure, just going all mad and checking out the impressive collision system is fun for a while, but after the first few races, you will probably be more interested in finishing in the first position. 
To do this, you must not only be a good driver, you also have to play smart by avoiding crashes and benefiting from them. And maybe that is what makes this game so good to me. That there is this crazy strategic layer added that you can't find in normal racing games. But just as in normal racing games, you always have something to play for. Even if you are in 10th place and it's impossible for you to catch up with the leader, you sure as hell want to beat the schmuck ahead of you to 9th place. Not all crashes in this game qualifies as clever though. A small number of tracks has figure 8 intersections, which may cause great unfortune to the driver leading the race if someone far behind t-bones him into the concrete. The blue shell in Mario Kart comes to mind here. But since these maps make out a minority of the maps in the rotation, they shouldn't make an annoyance to the more serious driver. It feels like they are just there to spice things up once in a while. It is a demolition derby racer after all. It may be obvious by now that I think this is a really good game, but I do have some minor issues with it. First of all, I find the time between races is too long. When the server changes track, the lobby initializes for a while until it starts a 60 second timer for people in the lobby to ready up. The time given is supposed to let players switch cars and do track specific tuning to get the most out of their vehicle. That is fine. However, 60 seconds plus the initialization time for the lobby feels like a year when you are just staring at the screen doing nothing. They could reduce this time to 30 seconds easy, and it seems like a quite popular opinion in the community. My second issue is that there is no minimap in this game, and this would be fine if it weren't for the subtracks mentioned earlier that creates quite a confusion for me. It's not a deal breaker, but I do miss it sometimes when I'm mistakenly interpreting a 180 degree turn as an easy left. And my last issue is that you have to play quite a lot to be able to be competitive in the A class in multiplayer. I'm close to 30 hours in this game now, and I have not earned enough experience to unlock all the upgrades to the A class cars yet. In my opinion, the experience part of this game is unnecessary. The in game currency would be enough. And if A-class upgrades are designed to give the player a sense of pride and accomplishment when obtained, just make them very expensive to purchase with the in-game currency. In that way, you could at least have one Class A car ready to rock earlier in the game. My conclusion of this video is that Breakfast is a very good game that I recommend to everyone that is interested in racing games in general, and it's a must-buy if you're a fan of the earlier Flatout series. If you are not included in any of the descriptions above, you may want to look at some more raw gameplay footage from Twitch or something and see if it's something for you before you hit that purchase button, as the game is quite expensive for not being a AAA title. For me personally, this game was worth every penny and I'm sure I will continue having a lot of fun with it in the future as well. Thank you for watching. If you want the latest updates on my new videos, feel free to subscribe to my channel below. Over and out.